fantastic one. The Battle of the Bulldogs, Kilgore at Chapel Hill, competing, of course, for that district title. So let's check out the highlights from this one. Well, it's senior night at Bulldog Stadium. Here comes Chapel Hill getting the crowd hyped. On the other side, though, it's Kilgore looking to reverse their recent misfortunes against Chapel Hill. And early on, Kilgore is finding success right away. Let's start it off with a good one here. Quarterback Derek Williams is going to get the ball here. Looking for a man, Derek Williams to Chris Williams. On the quick pass, that's going to get Kilgore on the board first. They're going to be fired up there. Look at that sideline. Chapel Hill, they're going to try and fight right back, though. They're scratching, clawing just to get on the board, but... Just a field goal there. Okay, still three. He's going to cut into Kilgore's lead a little bit. But let's get right back to those Kilgore Bulldogs. They're on fire, though, and they were hungry tonight. Derek Williams rolls to his left, throws deep, and the man is way behind the coverage. That's Braden Williams. What a catch and what a pass. These Bulldogs aren't done yet, though. Blows a little kiss to the band there. This time, it's going to be Derek Williams yet again. The leader out there, he's going to go head first into a scrum here. Losing for a little bit in the pile, but reappears in the end zone. For another Kilgore touchdown, they were making a statement on the road in Chapel Hill tonight. 33-17 to in the fourth. Looks like it's just about done here, barring a miraculous comeback. So yeah. Chapel Hill won't just lose this game. Obviously, they also lose district. But I think about ice it for Kilgore. It's about time we put a little respect on Kilgore's name, huh? No, for sure. And I know at the 630 show, I said that Kilgore might take it. And that's just because Chapel Hill hasn't been looking the same ever since they got that first loss. Yeah, it's uh, struggled a little bit on the defensive side, yeah. which you've seen there. But also giving props to Kilgore because, one, it's not easy to beat Chapel Hill at Chapel Hill. But let's look at their whole season. Just a yeah. loss week one by three to Carthage. It's hard to say a good team like that has flown under the radar, but it kind of seems like that's what they've done. And I kind of wish that they were a little bit higher in the rankings. I know that they're not worried about it, but Derek Williams looks flawless out there. They do. Yeah. Kilgore's looking fantastic yeah. on offense and on defense. And that's just showing it there. We'll catch up with head coach Clint Fuller coming up a little later in the show. But let's go to another district championship game here over in Timpson, where the Bears hosted the Garrison Bulldogs for that district championship. Bulldogs with the ball first, hand it over to J.D. Black. But the Bears come in, and they're going to claw that ball up from the Bulldogs. A little fumble there. Timpson takes it. Not much going on, though, for the Bears. Bulldogs with the ball again. Brayden Davidson goes deep to Christopher Shepard. But it's just going to fall short. So we're still scoreless in the first quarter. Pretty surprising. Oh, wow. But it's until this. Storming down the field to put the Bears on the board in the second quarter. Big run. You know who it is. Terry Bussey in there <laughs> for the end zone there. Timpson strikes first. But the Bulldogs trying to strike back right away. Again, we heard his name earlier, J.D. Black. Find an opening between the Bears. He's going to take a little touchdown here to put them on the board. Man, I just heard this place was packed tonight. Fired up there as well. Bears on the kick now after the touchdown. Ball's going to be received by Amari Bruton. And just check out the speed that this guy has. He's going to go all the way to the right, hugging the sideline. And he's going to take this all the way down, just short of a touchdown there. But it's Timpson, so you know they're going to capitalize on that just about right away. Here's J.J. Garner this time walking into the end zone. They got tons of weapons, and that's about it right there. Timpson is going to take the district championship here. Terry Bussey rushed for 200 yards and three touchdowns, also known as just another Friday night for Terry Bussey. I agree. I mean, and it was a pretty smooth win for them. They didn't do anything too crazy, but they were able to come away with the district well, win. Garrison, too, showing, hey, they were undefeated before this. Timpson's the number one team in the state. We never say, like, it's a good loss, but by nine to the number yeah. one team in the state shows that if they happen to meet up again in the playoffs, hey, you never know. Yeah, I agree for that one. Now headed over to Athens versus Palestine. Whoever wins this one advances to the playoffs for the big game. It's huge for these two teams, so we're going to see if they were able to pull it off to make it a good and, you know, back and forth game. Now starting off is Athens ball. That's Jackson Styles. He will eventually hand it off to Lazavion Lee. Pull bust right through the middle for the first down and a nice little pickup for him. Then that's Styles again. He steps back to pass it, but no one is open, so he tucks the ball and he runs and he decides to pick up a first down, a nice little one for the Hornets. He gets a couple, you know, breaks a couple of tackles in the process, gets hit, but it's a pretty good game for him. And once again, that's Jackson with the quarterback keeper securing the touchdown in style to put Athens up 7-0, walking off like he completely owns the place. Then after a fumble punt, it's Palestine's ball, and that's Coy Cooper. He hands it off to T.I. Crawford to tie the game up at seven. And let's see who's like, getting that playoff spot. Yeah, let's see. Ooh, there you go. Athens takes that one. All right. So as you see, their winner advances the playoffs just about iced there. So Athens will secure 
fourth place in that yeah. district heading to the playoffs where we know anything can happen. And they were just coming off of a tough loss to Tatum. So, I mean, that, I mean, I think to Chapel Hill, actually. I think, yeah, yeah Athens, Chapel Hill yeah, on the Chapel Saturday. Hill, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a good win for them. Yeah, well, let's go over to Tenaha now, just down the road from Timpson, where the Tigers hosted the Overton Mustangs. This one also for the district championship. Tigers leading 20 to 7 at this point. So the Mustangs need to catch up here. Bryce still hands the ball off to Blazy Horn, who zigzags his way through the Tigers, and he's going to put the Mustangs on the board to start the third quarter. A little slide on into the end zone there. Back to the Tigers now on this play now. Berkelian Kenny throws down the side to try and more. Isaiah Hawkins pushes back though. Moore's going to lose the ball, and it's going to be recovered there by Jay and Brown. All right, Overton right back in business now. They're making ground here. Again, it's going to be Bryce still looking for a first down. He's looking. He's going to keep it himself. Going all the way, and he is going to get just shy of the end zone here. But right at the five-yard line, let's see if anything can happen. Still squeezing in between the Tigers. Overton leading in the middle of the third. But there you go. Right in there for Kenny to Jordan Reese for a Tiger touchdown. So let's go for two points to even this one up. Says he's got this one. Goes right on into the end zone. And there you have it. So let's see our district winner in this I'm one here. My breath with this one. Mm, I know. Let's see. Oh, Still in the fourth. Okay. Ten off 35 to 21. Could put a halt on Overton's undefeated season, though. I mean, but like you said, you don't like to lose, but they have had an amazing season so far. Yeah, and even second in district gives you a pretty good spot in the playoffs as yeah. well. Still considered the favorite against the third place team from another district. But hey, you never know. Maybe Overton breaks out 14 points by the next time we see this graphic, right? Hopefully. We don't know how much time is left in a form, so they might be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep an eye on some of those district championships as well as catching up with a few of those a little later in the show. But first, let's take a quick break and check some of the day's biggest news headlines. Here's Brendan Gurley. Bryce Serenity Election Day is approaching this Tuesday. Texans will decide the fate of 14 constitutional amendments as well as other amendments would affect Texans in certain professions like granting retired teachers cost of living raises. Over the past two weeks, East Texas has seen a steady amount of early voters. If you take a look at your screen, Smith County has received nearly 10,000 votes, bringing in a 5.8 voter turnout. Early voter turnout triples previous two constitutional amendment elections and over in Gregg County, they have received over 5,000 votes, which brought in a 6.8 voter turnout. Shelby County Sheriff Kevin Windham, who underwent a double lung transplant earlier this year, announced that he will not seek reelection. Wyndham underwent a double lung transplant in August and says he's continuing to heal. As he recovers, Wyndham says his medical team advised him that it would not be in his best interest to seek re-election. He plans to be back in the office after the new year and serve one more year as sheriff to fulfill the role to the best of his abilities. Taking a look around the community now, if you don't have any plans for your Saturday morning yet, look no further. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. is the opening ceremony of the inaugural Children's Miracle Network Pickleball Tournament. The event will take place at Tyler Athletic and Swim Club, where over 60 participants are signed up to play. All the funds raised go back to serving their mission, and Children's Miracle Network manager Christina Mosier says that even the idea for the tournament was inspired by their kids. So when we started thinking about something fun to do as a fundraiser, uh, we noticed that a couple of our kids that have been Miracle Kids in the past were really into pickleball. And so we started kind of following their journey and they're really, really good. So when we decided to put on a tournament, the first people to sign up, of course, were some of our Miracle children. Well, if you aren't signed up yet to play, spectators are encouraged to come out and support them. Some of our CBS 19 crew will be there to join in on the fun and would love to see you there. Reporting in this studio, I'm Brennan Gurley. Thank you, Brennan, and we'll get right on the way with some more highlights and see some more of the district champions. All that coming up right after the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm Aubrey Saylor. You're watching CBS 19. Go Bulldogs. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Bill Dickinson Chevrolet. Hi folks, Bill Dickinson here with Bill Dickinson Chevrolet. And yes, we are changing the car buying experience with our non-commissioned salespeople. And just for logging on to bdchevy.com, click a vehicle of your choice and you can calculate the car payments right down to the very penny in the comfort of your own home based on your own credit. Log on to bdchevy.com. We have over 100 pre-owned vehicles to choose. I'll make some models. There's something for everyone at bdchevy.com. BD Chevy has something for everyone. We 
love to do sedation dentistry to provide a way for patients who typically avoid the dentist. We bring in a board certified anesthesiologist that allows us dentists to be able to focus on the patient while the anesthesiologist is taking care of their comfort levels. Tis the season to discover freedom from glasses and contacts with all laser LASIK at Eaton Eye Associates. Right now, bring a donation of a new unwrapped toy to benefit CASA for Kids and receive up to $1,000 off your LASIK procedure with up to 24 months interest-free financing. Schedule your free all-laser LASIK consultation today and celebrate this holiday season with clear natural vision. Merry Christmas from Heaton Eye Associates. Shop Goodwill this Black Friday for great deals and the lowest prices all day long. Truckloads of brand new items will be waiting for you. Toys, scarves, handbags, and so much more. Plus, you'll also feel good about helping to support your neighbors who need a hand up. Shop Goodwill this Black Friday for great deals and the lowest prices all day long. Truckloads of brand new items will be waiting for you. Toys, scarves, handbags, and so much more. Plus, you'll also feel good about helping to support your neighbors who need a hand up. What most people say is they wish they would have come in sooner. Anxiety built up so much and they stayed away, stayed away, but us with our anesthesiologists have found a way to deliver dental care as comfortable of, of a way as possible. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Smith Dental Care. It's pretty rare to see your starting quarterback produce on the offensive, offensive side of the ball and lay the hits down on the defensive side of the ball, too, all while being the undisputed leader of the team. But that's just the case for our player of the week. It's been a whole decade since Tatum has pulled off a district win, and they were finally able to do it last Friday night against Jefferson. I told y'all, we will come together as a group. We'll come together as a group. Special things happen. All right, congratulations to the 2023 20, district champion. It was a team effort, of course, bringing home the district title, but quarterback Cole Watson stood out amongst the rest. But I just try to go out there and, you know, do my assignment and play as hard as I possibly can and make plays when they need to be made and just hopefully come out with a win. He carried 23 times for 210 yards, had three touchdowns, and did I mention that he can hit two? The toll it takes on your body, you know, you're just playing both ways and you're going, you're, hit, you're getting hit on offense and you're delivering the blow on defense, you know, it's just, you know, playing snap after snap, not coming off the field much, you know, you can just you can get, uh, get a little tiring sometimes, but it's, it's fun, I enjoy it. Luckily for him, he won't have to play both sides of the ball much longer. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to college to play linebacker next year, so I'll get to do that uh, in a few short months. I've been playing defense my junior year, I started out, so um, just the uh, relationships I've built with the coaches in, uh, at LA Tech, and they've been really great to me, and I'm just excited about the future. Cole considers his speed and strength his biggest attribute to the team and looks up to current NFL players for inspiration. If you had to name one role model of yours that you try to mirror your play after, who would it be? Michael Parsons. Yeah, Michael Parsons, that's probably him. You know, he's... I mean, he's just unbelievable. You know, the plays he makes, you know, coming off the ball, especially on the defense side, you know, I like, it's, it's fun to watch him. So, so you consider yourself a lion on the field too? Yes, ma'am. I'm Serenity Douglas reporting in Tatum, CBS 19. Now, Bryce, he was pretty torn between Tony Pollard and Michael Parsons, but he ended that's up going kinda, with Michael Parsons. That's kind of two di very different comparisons. <laughs> I don't know, but okay, that works. I know. I'm ready to see if he was able to be a lion on the field tonight. They faced off with Atlanta, and Atlanta's a pretty tough team, so let's take a look at that menacing green Tatum smoke. They're letting Atlanta know it's game time, but we'll see if the Rabbits were in any way intimidated. Starting out with the quarterback keeper, but then that's Tatum. He's like, nah, and let's pass it to Caden Tatum, and he's down right before the end zone. The Eagles were starting strong, but ultimately were not able to score. So now it is Atlanta's ball. Peyton Harrison, he passes it to Jaden Riley, and he's off down the field on the way to claim the touchdown for the Rabbits. Now, I say this every single week. The Rabbits are so fast, so for that to be their mascot is pretty funny to me. They're just hopping away with touchdowns after touchdowns. But Tatum has our player of the week, and let's see if he can do anything with it, because there he is. He's taking the snap. That's Cole Watson. And he's trying to find his man, and he finds Carson Gonzalez. But the pass will ultimately be overthrown and incomplete. Ends up tripping oh, and rolling a little bit. Hopefully he didn't this, get this hurt. This is a pretty tough one for Tatum. Yeah, hopefully he didn't get hurt. But oh. this was a pretty tough one for Tatum. But Atlanta, yeah. wow. I mean, the Rabbits, 
The Rabbits have never really been one to play with this season, as, I, as I've been noticing. For yeah, sure. that district's a little interesting, too, because yeah. it really is any team can win on any given yeah. day there. Yeah, for sure. Crazy. Well, let's keep it in that district now. Some rivalry action in the last week of the regular season. Same theme here in Gladewater. The Bears taking on White Oak at Jack V. Murphy Bear Stadium. And the Bears are going to start off hot. Hand off to Carson Cooper here. Check this out. He's going to make a man miss right away. And he's going to bolt down that left side looking for some space. A little stutter step there. And he's going to get the corner and in for the first score of the game. It's going to be Gladewater. Next drive. Well, nothing new. Let's give it a handoff to Cooper yet again. Who's going to shake off a tackler. And there's nothing but him and the end zone. His second of the game extends the Bears' lead to 14 here. But White Oak, this said, hey, we figured some things out after the first quarter, and here we go. Michael Morgan has the ball. He is going to go absolutely deep on this one. He lost it for a little bit, but he is going to find his man. Gavin Sipes with a huge gain all the way down the sideline, looking to score. He gets caught up, too. Fumbles the ball, but it goes out of bounds, so it'll be White Oak's ball still, but that's okay because they're on the goal line, and Caleb Maxted rumbles on through for the rough neck touchdown. White Oak trying to hang in there as it's 14 to seven there. But that was about it as that was White Oak's only touchdown of the game. Man. 50 to seven Gladewater as White Oak unfortunately caps off an 0 and 10 season. I mean, this was our mobile site, Bryce, and I got to give a shout out to Gladewater's Frank Cisco. He told me in the beginning of the game, it's not going to be close at all. Yeah, and well, I can see I that for it. sure. Yeah. He got that. He's a little bit confident. All right. Now moving on. Next up is the four and five Sabine Cardinals up against the six and two Jefferson Bulldogs. It's tied at seven in the first and that's time is Taylor. He drops back and launches it deep, but into the wrong arms of a Cardinal. But that'll be his one and only mistake of this game. Now going into the second quarter. Taylor takes the snap. He quickly hands it off to Cameron Williams. You can't see him yet, but there he is because he's getting a whole lot of pressure on him, and he throws it away to Travis Gray. A little juke move there and into the end zone for the Bulldog touchdown. Now the Bulldogs have possession again, and that run game is unstoppable. That's Amron Boost getting in on the corner, and he scores a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Yet another one. The coach of the Cardinals did not like that one, but the refs did not call it. Now moving on, the Bulldogs just continue to go into beast mode here as Taylor finds the very tall Chris Love in the end zone, extending that lead 28 to 7. And with one second left in the second quarter, the Cardinals trying to make something happen with the double pass, but it'll be unfortunately intercepted and unsuccessful as they go into halftime. That's Justin Carter taking that interception for them. And Jefferson takes this one 56 to 21. All right, well, there you go. We said yeah. the district's a little crazy, too. Yeah. Let's take a look at those district standings for this one. Excuse me, making the playoffs, of course. Tatum right there. It's interesting when you go 5-5, five and five, but they still won the district because they beat number two Jefferson as well. Gladewater's locked into that spot there at number three. And Atlanta will slide into that last playoff spot right there at number four. Sabine and White Oak, the two looking in as they will miss the playoffs there. Man, that one's a tough one for White Oak for sure. Not I, a, yeah, I mean, I, I think really they're kind of over the season. Yeah. I know. I really wanted to see them come away with the win, but, you know, finish strong. He's one, yeah. <laughs> Looking ahead to next year there. Well, let's find out what the weather's going to look like for this weekend and beyond. Here's Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony. Hi, East Texas. What a great night for high school football, right? Well, it's going to continue overnight as we have a cool night and temperatures dropping to around 50 degrees. Tomorrow, hour by hour, we're up to 70 at noon, topping out around 75 or 76 degrees for that high temperature. Just a few clouds. Southerly winds Saturday night into Sunday, increasing the moisture. Cannot rule out a sprinkle or two here very early in the day Sunday. Otherwise, high temperature getting into the upper 70s Sunday afternoon and then Monday. The mild weather continues with temperatures in the morning already in the lower 60s. Don't forget to turn your clocks back one hour Saturday night into Sunday morning and gain that extra hour of sleep. Here's your Bill Scott White, Texas Pine Joint Hospital 7 day forecast. About as good as it gets. 76 Saturday, a sprinkle or two possible Sunday. Otherwise, a mix of sun and clouds and a high of 79. Clouds increasing Monday up to 81. It'll be a warm and breezy election day, a high of 84. Have a great weekend, everyone. An extra hour of sleep sounds all right to me. Yeah, it definitely does. I wish I had a clock to actually set Matt, though. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to check out the highlights from Harmony and Dangerfield and see who won that district. We'll be right back. I'm Lucas Frazier. You're watching Under the Lights on CBS 19. Go Roughnecks. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Ultra Federal Credit Union. Turn the key and open the door to your next home with a home loan from Ultra. 
With a variety of loan options, from buying your very first home to building the home of your dreams, we're here to help make it happen with a local connection you trust. Our professional loan experts are with you every step of the home buying process and through the life of your loan, making it easy to handle your finances and getting you back to what matters most. Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life. Family owned since 1966, East Texans have put their trust in Tyler Weathermakers and Carrier for all of their heating and cooling needs. Providing efficient Carrier AC systems for homes and businesses. With competitive pricing, quality installation, servicing on all brands, and 24-hour emergency service, our clients feel good inside. We make you feel good inside, Tyler. Turn to the experts. No matter where you are in East Texas, Benjamin Franklin Plumbing is there. Our professional team of service technicians is on the road and we'll be on time or we'll pay you. Our on-time guarantee is backed by highly skilled plumbers and we're all over East Texas taking care of your plumbing needs. We treat our customers like neighbors because you are our neighbors. So wherever you are in East Texas, call Benjamin Franklin Plumbing today. Tis the season to discover freedom from glasses and contacts with All Laser LASIK at Eaton Eye Associates. Right now, bring a donation of a new unwrapped toy to benefit CASA for Kids and receive up to $1,000 off your LASIK procedure with up to 24 months interest-free financing. Schedule your free All Laser LASIK consultation today and celebrate this holiday season with clear natural vision. Merry Christmas from Eaton Eye Associates. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by the Heat and I Associates. Well, this next game is one we've definitely had our eyes on for a little bit. That's Harmony and Dangerfield for the district championship. Dangerfield, of course, led by dynamic Texas commit Aaron Hampton. Harmony coming off a state semifinal appearance last season, but Dangerfield did win that district last year. And you know, the Lady Eagles for Harmony for the volleyball team actually just came off of a win yesterday, and they're headed to round three of the playoffs, so we're going to see if Harmony could mirror that a little bit, see if they got all the good vibes. So next up is Harmony and Dangerfield for that district championship. Harmony quarterback, that's Tyson Jenkins. He hands it off to Evan Weber for a slow pickup of six yards. Then that's Tyson Jenkins again, and a handoff to Evan Weber for an Eagles touchdown this time and that's the dynamic duo and the fans are definitely showing all the support for Evan Weber here then the Tigers quarterback that's Chase Johnson to Arion Hampton for a Tiger touchdown a really back and forth game I feel like Harmony Ooh. ended up having it though like I said they got all of that good juju from the <laughs> Lady Eagles the volleyball team and they got it 26 to 21 well there you go a big I district mean, win for Harmony they kind of flipped big. the script there on danger field as well interested to see what both of those teams do in the playoffs we could end up maybe seeing a rematch as well well Tyler Tyler Lions need to win this game to make playoffs of course a beautiful night as always for football at Rose Stadium they're hosting the Forney Jackrabbits with the game tied at six the snap almost flies over Lions quarterback Caden Granberry's head after corralling at he's going to be picked off by Forney Seth Hyder. It's going to lead to a Jackrabbit touchdown they're up 13 to six already but on the ensuing kickoff Marquette Martin grabs the ball and he's going to shoot through this for any special teamers heads and he's going to go 79 yards wow. to the end zone. Oh, can you get there? He's almost running out of juice here and he actually is going to be taken down at the one yard line. A few plays later, Lions still trying to take advantage of a fantastic field position. Ashton Ariaga is going to plow his way into the end zone for the Lions touchdown. Forney up 27 to 12. Tyler needs to turn it on quick. Forney gets the ball now and drives downfield and quarterback Kyle Crawford tosses to the end zone where Kofi Adupal grabs the ball for that touchdown sets it down a little bit so you can have this all right <laughs> but on the extra point check this out the Lions managed to block the kick here and Marquette Martin picks it up this dude is getting his steps in today going all the way back 90 yards the other way breaks the tackle he's still going wow. all the way Lions get two points but cherishing all the last moments of this season because no. Forney is gonna go ahead and win this one which means that Tyler season will be over. Let's go ahead and check this final score. 53 to 29 is your final wow. and it's really tough in a 5A division like this because Tyler's had a fantastic season so under a first year head coach Rashawn Wood, but 
just one game short as they will end up missing the playoffs. And had a whole lot of top plays in that game too, so it's really unfortunate to see them fall to 40. It is. I like seeing a little <laughs> two-point conversion block, yes. or not two-point conversion, block the kick and take it two points yeah. all the way back. You don't see those all the time. Yeah, not at all. He said I was not going to get taken down at the one-yard line that second time around. <laughs> well, we've seen some scores for tonight, so we got to check out our Fab 15 poll from last week. Kind of see what might change. Starting it off strong with Carthage, still undefeated, still sitting at the number one spot. Longview, eight and one at the number two spot. Pleasant Grove has just been killing it all year, nine and zero. Oh. Texas High, also nine and zero. Oh. Kilgore and Chapel Hill, we saw them face off for our game of the week. They both have the same record of eight and one. Sulphur Springs snuck into the top eight after being ranked ten at eight and one. And then finally, White House, seven and two. They hang on to the final spot after taking a tough loss last week to Texas High. Well, Timson might just solidify their number one spot for the entire season there. They're going to move to 10-0. Malakoff, pending their result, will move to 10-0 as well as the Winsboro. 10-0 with the bye this week. Beckville moving up to 9-1. Love Lady goes to 10-0. That's their second straight perfect season. Dangerfield, they're going to drop to 7-3. I won't be surprised if I see Harmony move on up to this top eight next week. Garrison drops to 9-1 after that loss to number one Timson. But I don't know if they should move that much because that's not a bad loss. And then West Rusk looking to wrap up their district title. They're at number eight at seven and two, looking to move to eight and two tonight, pending their result as well. So really not a lot of movement yeah. expected next week, but the interesting part is seeing how far Chapel Hill will fall after that loss too. Yeah, again, and I really hate to see it. They really let that one loss from Lindell really get to them. But now, I do wonder. Yeah, number you know. one team in the state for a while, yeah. too. So it's also interesting because they're going to go in as that third team in the district. So that's going to be a team that I don't think a lot of people want to see. Now, yeah. that, that was the number one team in the state for a long time. Yeah, I wonder what's going on with the Bulldog land over there, how they're feeling. Yeah, we'll see if they can figure it out heading into the playoffs now, a place that they definitely know how to win. We'll be back right after this break. Stick around. I'm Adrian Alexander, and you're watching Under the Lights on CBS 19. <laughs> Folks, Bill Dickerson here with Bill Dickerson Chevrolet. And yes, we are changing the car buying experience with our non-commissioned salespeople. And just for logging on to bdchevy.com, click a vehicle of your choice and you can calculate the car payments right down to the very penny in the comfort of your own home based on your own credit. Log on to bdchevy.com. We have over 100 pre-owned vehicles to choose. All makes and models. There's something for everyone at bdchevy.com. When does a credit union become more than a credit union? Maybe it starts simple, getting you in a vehicle that's safe and reliable for your daily trips. Or maybe it's getting your dream vehicle for weekend adventures to remember. Whatever your vehicle needs are, Altra is ready to go the extra mile. With professional loan experts, an easy application, and no payments for 90 days. Apply today at drivealtra.org. Altra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life. Spokespersons for Daniel Stark. At Daniel Stark, our remarkable team gets remarkable results. Here's what I mean. $438,916 to a car wreck victim for her neck and back injury. And $514,669 to another car wreck victim for injuries to his arm. That's money in their pocket. After a car wreck, results matter. So call us and find out what our team can do for you. Demand Daniel Stark. 1-800-483-8300. So with a busy season approaching, back pain started getting the best of me. My doctor said that spinal injections would help. She told me that Baylor Scott & White Texas Spine & Joint Hospital compromised nothing to safety and patient comfort. Their tenured staff and top-rated physicians earned them the Press Ganey Pinnacle of Excellence Award for patient satisfaction. Call 903-520-9696 to see how physician-owned Baylor Scott & White Texas Spine & Joint Hospital can help. CBS 19 Weather and Weather App are sponsored by Baylor Scott & White Texas Spine & Joint Hospital. Well, we love checking out some top plays, but we also like showing love to last week's top plays, too. And there's always a lot. Yeah, there's always a lot. Last week and this week, I'm ready to see them, though. Let's go ahead and check out those top plays from last week.
Let's kick off our top plays from last week with this heater. Javari Johnson for Texas High against White House breaks the tackle there, and he is off to the races. That man is fast, and no one is going to catch him there. Texas High scores en route to a big district championship win over White House. Over to Carthage now. These guys know how to win, and they know how to score. Hand off to KJ Edwards, who breaks through the crowd there and gets right on in for an easy Bulldog touchdown. But this one was just crazy. Cash cross, goes for the handoff. There's nobody there. Breaks one tackle, two, three, four, five tackles. Tackles, six tackles, and there's probably seven tackles somewhere in there. Breaking out down the sideline. He's looking for something. Breaks an eighth tackle. He's still going nine and before he's taken out for a huge 40-yard gain. Over to Overton now. Still undefeated, and Bryce Still has been making it happen all year long. Too easy on the quarterback keeper right up the middle for the touchdown. Over to Jefferson now. Cameron Williams gets the handoff. Breaks out to the right side. He's going out. He has one man to beat, and he is going to get there into the end zone for a Jefferson touchdown. And the best part of all, when you score Jefferson, you say, can I pet that dog? There you go. Our top plays from the last week of action in East Texas. It might be one of my favorite plays of the season. It's not often you get to pet the dog. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, how do you have just a mascot just sitting there waiting for you? So... Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, shoot, why not? <laughs> Jefferson knows what's up. I mean, they're dogs. Like, what can you say? What can you expect, really? We're looking ahead to the playoffs now, of course, wrapping up some of these district championships. Yeah. We'll hear a little later in the show from uh, Kilgore's head coach as well, but talking about that Kilgore win, that wasn't just a regular win. That was more than even a statement. That was dominating. That was domination over Chapel Hill. I can't say I'm surprised, though. Chapel Hill has been struggling a little bit lately, so it's a tough one for them. I think it really falls on the Chapel Hill defense, though, because you know the yeah. offense can really put up the points, but even then, everything kind of seems a little out of whack right now, which isn't very like Chapel Hill, yeah. so going into the playoffs, definitely something they'll need to figure out on this little week. I mean, they got a win over Athens last week, but Demetrius just didn't look like himself to me, and like you said, also the defense has just been struggling. Well, they figured out it's going to be a scary team in playoffs. Remember, they were number one team in the state for a reason. But coming up, join us on CBS 19 Plus. We'll hear from head coach Clint Fuller of the Kilgore Bulldogs, and we'll have more highlights there. Come on over to CBS 19 Plus. We'll see you there. CBS 19 closed captioning is...
Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Bill Dickinson Chevrolet, Ultra Federal Credit Union, Smith Dental Care, and Heat and Eye Associates. East Texas, you know where the party's at. Welcome back into Under the Lights here on CBS 19 Plus. I'm Bryce Braunison. And I'm Serenity Douglas. Well, we talked a little bit about our game of the week. Kilgore and Chapel Hill, this yeah. one for the district championship, essentially, with some little extra numbers in there, too. Yeah, for sure. And Kilgore really made their statement with them. Yeah, well, let's go back to those highlights and check it out one more time. Well, senior night at Bulldog Stadium for Chapel Hill, and here they come. Getting the crowd hyped, looking to take down Kilgore, but there's Kilgore there on the other side, looking to reverse their recent misfortunes against Chapel Hill. A little bit of a, a revenge game there. Early on, Kilgore is going to find success right away. Quarterback Derek Williams, he's looking for his man. How about Chris Williams here? On the quick pass here to get Kilgore on the board right away. That's a touchdown. They're going to be fired up there. Chapel Hill, meanwhile, they were just struggling to get on the board early. They're going to go ahead and punch in a field goal here to cut in Kilgore's lead, put up three. But it's hard to catch up with Kilgore when they're making plays like this next one here. They were hungry tonight. Derek Williams gets the ball again, rolls to his left, throws off balance, and connects this time with Braden Williams. How many Williams are on the same team? But what a catch, what a pass. These Bulldogs just aren't done yet, though. Let's blow that kiss to the band there. This time, Derek Williams, he's been giving it to a little bit of everybody. This time, though, he's going to take it himself. Goes headfirst into the scrum, disappears for a bit, and then reappears in the end zone. How nice is that? Another Kilgore touchdown. They were making a statement on the road tonight, and they're going to take the district here. 39 to 16, man. your final from Chapel Hill. Not just a win, but nearly a blowout, may I say. Kilgore has the playmakers, and that's what I saw all throughout those highlights. It wasn't just Derrick Williams every single play. Yeah, Kilgore, not a team I want to see in the playoffs. Ranked four in the state right now, but yeah. certainly looking at their schedule and their performances this year, I'd say has an argument to be number one. Yeah, and Chapel Hill just got their second loss, so that's a tough one for them. Well, let's see how that goes in the playoffs, and maybe we'll see another rematch again this year. Let's head on over to Timpson now, where the Bears hosted the Garrison Bulldogs for their district championship game. Bulldogs going to get the ball first, hand it over to J.D. Black, but Timpson's going to swarm him, and they're going to claw that ball up from the Bulldogs. Ball is loose. Timpson has it, but they couldn't get anything going, so the Bulldogs with the ball again. Braden Davidson is going to go deep to Christopher Shepard but it's going to fall short. So unbelievably, we're scoreless at the end of the first quarter in this one. But have no fear because Terry Bussey is here and he <laughs> makes things happen all the way down the field, puts the Bears on the board in the second quarter, which is another business as usual play. But the Bulldogs here saying, well, our turn now. J.D. Black finds an opening between the Bears and takes in the touchdown here to put them on the board, just falling in now. So now they're going to go ahead and kick this one back off to Timpson. Ball's caught by the speedster Amari Bruton and just check out the space that he's going to find on this play and that field position that he's going to get for Timpson. Field position is everything. When you got a returner like this, it sure helps. All the way down, just short of a touchdown. So let's give it on to J.J. Garner. He scored a lot this year and he's going to add yet another one here into the end zone and on in for a Timpson district championship game. The number one team in the state just makes it happen and so does Terry Bussey. The Texas A&M commit Rushing for 200 yards and three touchdowns as Timpson takes this one by nine and takes the district. But you got to give a shout out to Garrison. You know, they only helped them. They didn't lose by that much at all. Yeah, it was a close one last year, too, and I would love to see this rematch later on in the playoffs. Yeah, I think Garrison needs that for sure. They want to see the Bears again. But let's head over to Beckville, where the Bearcats are taking on Union Grove. Beckville is known for putting up some big points, so let's see if they could do it tonight. Now, there's the snap, and that's the beast, of course, Jacoby Williams. He has the ball. He keeps it, and he does what he does best, and he takes it all the way to the end zone. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of him tonight because, well, it's Jacoby Williams, and we always see a lot of them. And here's another touchdown for Beckville, but this time it's from Aiden Harris because they have playmakers. He finds a hole and he takes it down the edge for another touchdown for Beckville. And of course, like I said before, Beckville always puts up the big points and let's see if they could do it again. So that's Jacoby Williams. That's Jacoby Williams, yeah, the quarterback keeper. We want, more Jacoby. <laughs> yeah, we, want, we want more Jacoby. He takes it all the way down the 
field, breaking everyone's ankles on the way. I love seeing a quarterback just be speedy. He's so good. Yeah, he's so good. And remember, he wasn't even a quarterback to start the season. He's technically a running back slash receiver slash do whatever Man. the heck happens because <laughs> you can do, do whatever. All. Yeah. Mr. Do It All. I got Mr. Sure. Make It Happen yeah, for sure. Yeah, we can sure. see that final score 56 to 9. I expect nothing less of the Bearcats. I think Beckville basically won every district game by 50 plus, yeah. essentially. That is. They're there to embarrass yeah, teams, wow. not just win. I'll tell you a rematch I really want to see. How about Beckville and Timpson one more time, Ooh. like we saw week one? That'd be another one. Timpson's got the best of them recently, but. You never know there. So let's keep it going now. Canton is going to go ahead and visit Russ for a slim chance of playoff hopes here, but let's get right into the action. Canton trailing 13-0, looking to get going. Colin Campazano with the keeper. Looks to be stopped, but he's still going all the way down the sideline for a huge gain. Campazano was moving there, and he's going to keep the ball again now on the keeper, and he's going to get right on in for the touchdown. Canton goes, and it's a ball game now. A little pile up in the end zone there at the bottom of it there. Russ ball now. Brady Barrier is going to hand off to Bryson Griffin, who's going to go ahead and reverse it now to Hayden Barnett. We're looking all over the place for him, and there he goes. Gets the first down, and Rusk is still rolling now. Brady Barrier going to get the ball yet again. Looking back to pass now, he's going to see a little open for him. So you know what? Let's just take off. Let's get the first down ourselves. Barrier going all the way down there. Takes a little hit, but gets down to about the 20-yard line. And now, Barrier again. Looking downfield, scrambling a little bit. He's going to go a desperation throw to the end zone. And he's going to find his man, Bryson Griffin, for the touchdown. Russ going to go ahead and go for a little two-point conversion there as well. They're going to get it. And they're going to go 21-7 to in this one. I'm going to see the final in here. Oh. Close. Yeah. Wow. And I'm pretty sure he 13. threw that one with his eyes closed. He's like, look, let yeah. me just launch it and hope my receiver catches it. Well, that fourth <laughs> playoff spot in that district is really wide open. So I'll we'll have yeah. to keep an update on that going into next week of who got that final spot between Russ, Bullard, Brownsboro, Cannon. Could be any one spot there. Yeah, it definitely can be. But we have a lottery game, right? So let's see. We do. We have some rival reaction, of course, on the last week of the regular season. We're going to have the same theme here yet again in Gladewater as the Bears are going to take on White Oak at Jack V. Murphy Bear Stadium. You know this one, well, White Oak looking for their first win of the season. We saw it earlier. They didn't get it. But we still got some highlights. Bears start off hot. Hand off to Carson Cooper, who's going to make a man miss. He's going to bolt down the left side, get in the corner, and get in for the first score of this game for Gladewater. And the next drive, well, if it works, then why fix it? Hand off to Cooper again, who shakes off a tackler, and there is going to be nothing but him and the end zone. His second of the game extends the Bears' lead to 14 here as Gladewater just rolling early here, but White Oak figured some things out. So here we go. We're going to go right onto it now, and we're going to have Michael Morgan at quarterback. He's going deep, and guess what? He's going to find his man down the sideline past the coverage. Gavin Sipes with a catch and a huge gain. He's going to get cut off, too. He's going to fumble out of bounds, but it doesn't matter because it's still going to be White Oak ball. They're on the goal line, and Caleb Maxted is going to go ahead and rumble on through for the rough neck touchdown. I'm glad we got that touchdown because, unfortunately, they didn't score another one in this one. Gladewater 50 to 7. I think White Oak might be happy their season is done here. They finish 0 and 10. Maybe promising getting a little something going for next year. Yeah, and Gladewater, they got their third win, and that was a pretty good one for them too. And of course, they have a playoff spot as well in yeah. that third spot. So we'll see who they go on and take on. And if Gladewater gets hot, you know, maybe they make a little magic happen in the playoffs too. I mean, just like they did for their senior night, they look good out there. Yeah, well, we have a whole lot of highlights coming up next. So make sure to stick around. We'll have all those coming up right after the break. I'm Jordan Prince, and you're watching Under the Lights on CBS 19. Go Kids.
How about Texas High also looking to cap off a 10 and 0 season? It's not easy to do. Although we see a lot of 10 and 0 teams around here. Doesn't mean it's not hard. Yeah, definitely. And they've been looking great so far this season. They got a pretty good win over White House last week, too, in mm -hmm. a rivalry game. Yeah. Yeah. And that clinched the district championship for Texas High as well. Taking on Pine Tree. Pine Tree needs to win this game to get their playoff hopes alive. So let's get right into it. Hosting Pine Tree tonight up in Texarkana in the second half now. David Potter hands the ball off to Tredarian Ball, who's going to pick up some valuable yardage here. We're going to take a little hard hit there, too. Again, Ball continues to move the ball. He's got some moves, man. He is cooking out there. Short time later, let's keep it going here. Tredarian Ball yet again. This time, he's going to get across that goal line for the score. Right on in there. We love some Texas high highlights. Tredarian Ball making another Texas visit this Saturday. Let's check the final score here in this one. We know it got a little crazy. It got a little it close did. here as well. Ooh, oh overtime. My. Well, I'm just shocked that Texas High lost. Uh, yeah, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I will say that. But Pine Tree is known for their stellar defense. But Texas High getting their first loss mm. is a tough one. But to Pine Tree, unexpected. Talk about a team that make, wants to make the playoffs. I think Pine Tree yeah. might have got their way in on that one. And if they're rolling, then shoot, that defense is crazy. For sure. But quick little, you know, shout out to Tredarian Ball. Hopefully he chooses Texas because I'm a little biased. Yeah, I'm about to say, one. okay. <laughs> All right, now on to Spring Hill versus Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove still sitting at the number three spot. The Hawks have been looking good all season. Now, for the quarterback, he passes the ball to Jackson Gibson, who takes it in to score first. First points of the game. The first seven for the game, and the Hawks are looking good as ever. Now, Spring Hill quarterback, he wants in on the action. He hands the ball off to Trevor Allen, who takes the ball around the right side to even up the score at seven. Nobody could catch him. Now, a few plays later, the Hawks quarterback, he passes it to his man, Torian Phillips, who takes the ball all the way in for a touchdown for a nice little run. Looks like he's about to jet up the sideline. You can't see him yet because the rough is in there the way. He he's going to the sideline, and there he is. He's up scoring for the Hawks to put them up. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Pleasant Grove for this one. Pro. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of like a weird score. It seems too even. It seems too even to, uh, I don't know, 70 to 30. Wow. Like I said, Pleasant Grove has been making their impact, still sitting at the number three spot yeah. in the rankings. Well, there you go, huh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. That one was a tough one for them. Now, on to Wascom versus Hughes Springs. Wascom, he kicks it off to Hughes Springs, and the returner, he runs it all the way back. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it's 55 yards. He throws in a couple of juke moves for the Mustangs before he's finally taken out. Now, ask him. He ends up picking up 20 more yards to gain some momentum for them, and it's still pretty back and forth, but nobody is on the board yet. Now, Joe Irving, he runs the ball all the way in for a touchdown. Jumps oh. over a man. A little hurdle. A little hurdle there. All right. 52 I like to that eight hurdle. Over Hughes. <laughs> Me too. Over Hughes Spring. Great form. Unfortunately, Hughes Springs also completed an 0 and 10 season Man, too. We hate to see like it. Just like White Oak. That, that's mm. one, that one's pretty tough. Let's head on over now. White House and Marshall. This one was interesting last year. Marshall hoping to finish the year at five and five. They played host to White House. Mouse with the ball first. Little throw over the middle is going to be complete. But the ball is going to be loose. The refs say it's a fumble. There's a little bit of confusion on the field here, but the Wildcats are going to end up scooping this one up. It's going to be a turnover, and it's going to be White House ball. They're going to cash in. Jaron Williams is going to break a tackle here. He's going to find the edge, and he is going to go around and in for a touchdown. White House up 7-0 now. But the Mavs have a little response here. Ensuing drive. He's going to find some room for Isaiah Bush. He's going to find it. He's going to try and get all the way down here. They're going to get caught up in the red zone. But he's going to score later in the drive to tie it up now. So White House getting the ball back now. Another give for Williams here. But this time, well, it's another fumble. The ball comes out, and, and this time it's going to turn it over. Mavs are going to fall on it, and they're going to turn it into a little field goal here to take a 10-7 lead. And back and forth, they just keep going. Marshall ball again. Collier Sloan rolling out, firing on the run. But a heck of a play made by Gabe Stroud to get the pick, and he gets a foot down. White House ball. Scores on the drive to take a 14 to 10 lead. So let's go to the closing seconds of the half. Time running out for the Mavs at the goal line. They're going with the Jalen Hurts tush push at the buzzer. It works. Marshall with a 17 to 14 lead at halftime. But were they able this to hang on close. to it? 
Okay. Wow. wow. White House points. again. Two years in a row. White House loses the season finale to Marshall. And, you know, I spoke with Coach Westerberg a little bit mid-season, and he was telling me he was trying not to put too much pressure on his athletes because it could be pretty tough going through these district games, and it looks like they fell to the pressure by two points. Absolutely. Not the right trend you want to see, yeah. though, losing both district games before the playoffs as well. Yeah. We'll see if White House is able to turn it around there. But after this break, of course, we got our top plays. My favorite part. If you want to stick around for that, we'll be right back. Well, we saw a little earlier Kilgore wrapping up the district championship game against Chapel Hill and one that a lot of people were really looking forward to. I definitely was looking forward to. I was ready to see Chapel Hill really put in everything that they had, but unfortunately they fell short. Yeah, well, our game of the week, of course. So Dan Millay was out there and he was able to catch up with head coach Clint Fuller of the Kilgore Bulldogs right after the game. Guys, this was a really heated, really fiery game, so I asked Coach Clint Fuller after the fact how his team was able to hold on, beat their rival, and win district over Chapel Hill tonight. Well, it starts with our offense. You know, our offense controlled the game early. Uh, you know, we're able to keep our defense on the sideline, which is always good. Uh, and then defensively, you know, our kids had, we had a plan. Um, they executed the plan. They played their hearts out. They played fast. They played physical. Uh, and, and so I was just really proud of, and, of the way we played in all three phases of the game tonight. Guys, it was a really dominant all-around effort from Kilgore. They take this one 39 to 16. Next stop, the playoffs. Dan, thank you. And here's your district standings for the four teams make it into the playoffs. Athens, of course, won that winner go home, so they'll get into that four spot. Really surprising to see Chapel Hill in the three spot. Not where a lot of people expected that as well. 
But how about a strong district run by Lindale after yeah. a tough non-district one? And then, of course, your top dogs, the Kilgore Bulldogs, right there at number one there. We'll have those playoff pairings coming into the next week. But there you go. There's your four from that District of Doom. Yeah. Not easy. And I can see why it's called the District of Doom. But shout out to Lindell for taking that second spot after taking down Chapel Hill. It did, yeah. I mean, really, when you have all those teams, Kilgore, Chapel Hill, Lindale, maybe yeah. even Athens, if they go on a run, it's usually two of those teams we see meeting each other in the regional finals in the past yeah. few years. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And to speak on Athens a little bit, they played Chapel Hill last week, and mm -hmm. they did not roll over easy to them. They actually gave them a hard time, although Chapel Hill did walk away with the win. Well, that's what I call it, District of Doom. Yeah. Any game there. Well, I think it's time. Let's get right into it. Our top plays on the night. Let's start off with where our mobile set was, of course, Gladewater. Hand off to Carson Cooper. Shakes off a tackler and finds some room, and there is no one between him and the end zone. All the way in as Gladewater took a big win, 50-7 to over their rival. Then the Bears, they kick it here after a Bulldog touchdown. The ball is caught by Mary Bruton. He goes up the right. He's hugging that sideline, and he's just short of a touchdown, but a great run for him, putting him in a great range. And how about Kilgore? We've been talking about them all night. Here's Derek Williams. Have a night. Rolling to his Ooh. left, throws off balance, and connects with Braden Williams. What a catch. What a pass into the end zone and blowing the kisses to the Chapel Hill band. Now this one is from Hugh Spring and Wascom, but it's from Wascom kicker. He kicks it off to Hugh Spring, number five. He's a returner for 55 yards. He throws a couple of juke moves in there for the Mustangs, and he's looking great before he's finally pushed out of bounds. A Beckville top play, but this time, no, it's not Jacoby Williams. It's Aiden Harris. Gets the handoff, finds some room, gets down. He will find the end zone two touchdown Beckville and another blowout district win. Wow. Aiden looked like he wasn't even phased by that tackle. He said, wow, somebody Bro touched me. Bro was moving. Yeah, Look at him. Nobody, wow. nobody touched me. I didn't even feel it. <laughs> well, there you go. We love a little bit of top plays. But let's go back and look at all the scores from the big games tonight on this busy night of football. Of course, you got Kilgore and Chapel Hill there. Kilgore Ice District, 39-16 to your final. A little more lopsided than we might have expected. Timpson as well won their district, 35-26. Tenaha ends Overton's undefeated perfect season, 41-21 to your final as Tenaha win district. And then another district championship, how about Harmony taking down Dangerfield on the road by five there, 26-21 to your final in favor of Harmony. Then Athens coming off of a loss to Chapel Hill, they were able to come into this one with a win, 49-28 over Palestine. White Oak just not able to get their first win. They fall to Gladewater 50 to 7. Pine Tree to Texas High. This one was very surprising. Pine Tree known for that defense, and they were able to take that win 19 to 13. And then Spring Hill and Pleasant Grove. The Hawks really made their statement with that score. I mean, what else can you say about 70, 70 to 30? 70 piece. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Well, you see the score is there. Of course, this was the last week of the regular season. So after this, it's playoff time. Yeah, all gas, no breaks. All right, we'll have all those playoff pairings and more as they get decided through the weekend. Coming up on Monday when we get all of our playoff. And don't forget to join us, too, for Under the Lights Playoff Special on Wednesday at 6.30. We're going to have more details about that as well as some of the best storylines from this season. Yeah, I'm ready to see all of it. Even the top plays, the special and everything. We're in for a treat for sure. Well, there you go. Next time you see us, it's going to be playoff time. So thanks so much for joining us for the regular season finale here in Under the Lights. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for joining us.